Well, I'm ready to rock with the new kids on the block. I'm going to view. Huh? I'm going to view. View what? Oh, yeah. But we're going to intro first. Yeah. I'm just going to have it ready. That's a that's a mighty fine idea. There we go. Look at that. Okay. We're going to intro? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. This is Brooke. And this is Nikki. And this is my so-called whatever. Welcome to the block party. We ain't leaving now. No body. Except for us. I know that. Stop I feel it. Very, I feel I'm very so left sad. out. I know. Well, but it's my it was fault. a good decision. No, it's not your fault. It was a very Ugh. good decision. We made a very smart decision. A very hard decision, but a very smart decision. I feel like it was a mature decision. It is. And I hate adulting, but guess what? I do too. We but have sometimes to. we have to. So, it's Friday night, right? February second, right? The night we were supposed to be hanging out with Jordan, right? In Boston, no, well, our friends technically are there. in Milton. Milton, I like that name. Milton. I do too. Milton Bradley. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Mil- Milton Burl. I don't know who that is. Milton. Bur- I don't know. The name just like came up. Yeah, I think it's close to. <laughs> Famous old man. Oh, okay. Anyway, so maybe his name wasn't Milton, but whatever. <clears throat> we were supposed to be there. We do miss our friends, mm-hmm. but we didn't go. Right. Because we had some weather. Right. We had some wintry mix. School was canceled. School up was here canceled in Maine. today because of ice and snow. Mm-hmm. And so then there's that. That alone wouldn't really keep us. Nah. But then I've been sick, and... It just wasn't the kind of sick that we should be traveling. Correct. So, that's, that makes it sound like I couldn't stop pooping or something. <laughs> it wasn't that kind of sick, you guys. It wasn't. It wasn't. You can just tell me you were dizzy. Yeah, like, I've just been dizzy, like, and I, f- I feel, like, like fluish. Is that okay that like, I said that? Yeah. Well, it's like, it's, it's ner- like, I'd be nervous it was vertigo. Like, I've been saying all along... I think I have vertigo. I, I don't know what that is, but like I just the way know that old you, people that have it. But the thing is, like you being around a ton of people when that happening, that's like not not a good idea. So and also I'd be driving, <laughs> right? Not a good idea. I mean, I could have driven, right? I could have driven because Milt it, Milton's not. I don't. Do I have to drive through Boston to get to Milton? Well, sort of. We'd have to get out of the car. <laughs> Because I'd have probably a panic attack going across the bridge because right. I would think of the big dig that happened. Right. And I would think I was in the instant car again and that would not be good. Oh my gosh, the instant car. I seriously broke that. Like, I was never the same after that. Never the same. I was recognized but in I'll traffic. But I'll still stay the same. You get that, Joey Mac? I hope you always stay the same. I hope that, um... I listened to that song today, but we can talk about that later. Stay the same? Yeah. So anyway, yeah, no. I'm like, long story short, long story short, it was the adult decision to not go. Mm-hmm. So in our place, we gave tickets to some friends. Yeah, and they're having a good go, time. And they're having and a I'm great real, time. I'm I'm really excited. I am too. And they've been sending us videos and pictures, and we Facetimed, and it looks like they're having a lot of fun. They're including us, and it's yeah. making us feel a lot better. It's so. nice, and sometimes, we're sad that we're not there. Yeah, but. sometimes you have to make a hard decision. Yeah. So, that's where we're at. But here we are, recording. Yeah. Like always. Here we go. Just like every Friday night, you can count on us being here recording. That's true. So you can hear us on Mondays and Wednesdays. That is correct. And you know what? There might come a week where it doesn't work out that way. I mean, we'll let you know in advance. Right. As much as we can. We're going to try to keep our, like, we've done it since day one. We really have. But, you know, there might just come a time that we just might not be able to do that. Yeah. And that's okay. That's totally okay. That's okay, right? Yes, that is okay. Because you know what? We're human. Also, I listen to podcasts that repeat episodes on the regular. I don't want to do that. So. Not that it's, not that it's not bad. I just. It's fine that they do that. But you know what? Like, if I listen. Like, it's fine. People aren't going to care if we are a day late. No. Or if we take a day off. I don't think so. No. But I'm just putting that out there just because, like. I like that. I think that we. What do you think? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, you never know what might happen around the corner. You don't. Like, what if you got really sick? You do our editing. Yeah. So, like, you are human. That is true. So. We could, I, and then, like, yeah, eh, whatever. But anyway, I don't know why I said that. I think because we were talking about it, because it almost happened. Yeah, that's true. It did almost happen. This week I was really sick. This has been a really It has been a roller coaster of a week. Yeah, it has. And I started getting sick, what, last week? Yeah. And because I coach basketball, if you didn't already know that. And so that, plus the podcast, plus work, plus sometimes it adds up. Yeah. But I, I would never, like, this is my outlet, I feel. Do you feel that way? Like, this is my outlet. Yeah, totally. Like, this is, I'm so glad I have this. Like, how many years did people say, Nikki, you need a hobby? You need a hobby. And I would say, I don't, I don't have time for a hobby. And like, what hobby would I have? Like, what would I do? People had told me that, had been telling me that for a while. Just like, random people. Like, my mom or whatever. I tried crafting. Well, that's just it. Like, I'm not, you need a hobby. Well, what should I do for a hobby? Collect stamps. Oh, okay. I mean, should I, like, oh, thank what you. does one do for hobbies these days? So, Joey McIntyre. Yeah, if you didn't know this. Joseph. If you didn't Joe, listen last week. Joey Joe. Had a little podcast episode. Yes. Asked for some questions. We said to our community, hey, right before I went to a doctor's appointment, I was like, <laughs> Hey guys, Joe's asking for questions. Yeah, do you mind just uh, telling them, telling them about us, telling about mission interview Joey twenty eighteen? Yeah. Actually, here's what I did. I said it to our moderators. Right, they went out and freaking made magic happen. They hit the ground running with the rest of the community. Yep. It was insane. And how many times did Joe say us say our name well, on the podcast? Because he was doing it, like, live. Like, he was right. reading these tweets. Like, he didn't go through the tweets first and pick out some. No. He was just looking at his phone. I, I freaking loved it. Like, reading them as they came. Here's the thing. It was real. It was real. I loved seeing him that way. Like, I loved him interacting. It just made, it just, per, like, it personalized the episode so much. Yeah. Because we got to see a side of him that I really have never seen like he was just himself he was just raw i liked it do you like not to yeah. be weird but like no just i like, liked it it was good this is me these are his kids it was adorable and i'm just still thank you yeah thanks joe thank you you guys showed the love you spread the love mm. spread the love and good things happen <sighs> like mission interview joey on nkotb cruise 10 do you think it's gonna happen what, us going on the cruise and talking to Joe? Yeah. I don't know. We we need help making it happen. Well, like, I just don't know, like, how will the logistics work? I don't know. That's my biggest question. I think that he should just come to our room. On the cruise? Yes. Well, what are you going to do? Go to his? Okay. You, got, you just got excited. <laughs> you, got, <laughs> you got visibly no, excited. No. You did. You, no, you were like, oh, no, what? No, what? No. no, I think he should just come to our room. We could do it in our room. Because where else are we going to do it? Can we have, like, warning? Well, yeah, we need warning. What are we going to do? Get up in our pajamas with no bras on? I don't know. Like, really? With, like, makeup smushed on my face? My eyelashes all clumped together? This is, like, totally off topic, but on topic? Yeah. But you know how they were saying, you know how they say, like, the guys go to the rooms and stuff like that, whatever? This would be the ultimate scenario. Because I was telling Christine (laughs) that, like, I'm one of those people, I'm just unlucky in general. Like... Some not like bad things, but like it's just like wow, that's really unlucky. Like, <laughs> like what? Sorry. I can't. Th- maybe, like, maybe I'm thinking too big picture. You're thinking too big picture. I'm just thinking of like you think that the obvious thing was going to happen, and then it like the exact opposite happens. Things like that. So what would be but, this? But everything happens for a reason, right? So the scenario is that I, I crash. You don't. I'm drooling. <laughs> Left my makeup on. So. Mascaras like everywhere. Like eyes. Yep, I was all sweaty. So my hair's all like, and I'm, you know, like all gross. Yeah, all sleepy gross. Yeah, like like full time sleepy gross. Like snoring, drooling, drooling, probably. Worst case scenario, farting. Stop it, bro. <laughs> you can take that out. Yes. Stop it. But yes, 
But, you- <laughs> but see. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm in bed. And who comes into the room? Oh, it's Joe. You saying that's the best scenario? No, this is this is this is what's going to happen. Oh, because this is this is what happens. But why would he come in the room? Would I have the door open? Yeah, because we're going to keep the door open. Well, I'm not going to keep the door open while we're both sleeping. No, I'm sleeping. I like tried to stay up. You told me to go to sleep. I didn't because that was what would happen. Right, Nikki, it's time to go to sleep. No, I don't go to sleep. So I go to sleep because you've already slept. I finally crash because I right. You told and me. And then so. Joe comes in the room and you're sleeping. Yep. And then you know, like you're like Nikki, wake up. And I'm like five more minutes. And then I say. Joe McIntyre is in the room, and you, I can picture it. I can picture it. <laughs> no, I can picture it right now. Well, what now. do you think would happen? I can picture it right this second. I know exactly what would happen. What would happen? You would jump out of bed. Would I? You would jump out of bed faster than a lightning bolt. <laughs> and your hair would be, like, <laughs> cockeyed. Maybe. And you, like, you would jump. You would be recording. You would be flat on your feet in, like, literally 0.5. Like, you would be on your feet... Like on guard, I I just know what's gonna happen. Like I can I can picture it. I know you so well. I know you so well, and you wouldn't be quiet about it either. <laughs> oh God! I I would I would say it. I would say Nikki, you gotta get up, and you'd be like, rah, 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 rah. I'd say no, you need to get up, and you'd have your headphones. Yep, I'd have my headphones on, blasting. Yeah, and you'd take it over, and I'd I'd take them you. off, and I'd, I'd say you, you need to get up. Yeah, you need to get up. Yeah, no, Nikki, Joe McIntyre's here. And you would be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 And then you would jump up. It's still right now. Because that's what you would do. I know. And then you would sound like a cat. <laughs> and then he'd be scared and he'd run away. He wouldn't run away. He would laugh. Because it'd be funny. Are you recording this the whole time? Yes. <laughs> Christine. Yes. And, but he, like, honestly, like, that's what would happen. Then I'd cry because I'd be embarrassed. You would be so embarrassed. <laughs> but it wouldn't matter because he'd be, like, cool with it. Because, like, what, like, what are you trying to do here? Like, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to marry him? No. Of course not. So who cares if you are, if you're, like, drool and I'm just sleepy? Be- just because, just because, just because. Because you know what? We'd all have a good laugh about it. Yeah, that's true. And it would have been, it would be memorable. He'd never forget that. Oh God! <laughs> we probably have nightmares about it. <laughs> no, but I, oh, like God. I could just pi- I could picture it. I know exactly what you'd do. I just know you <laughs> so you well. That, when you just did that, that's you. I was like, I couldn't really picture what I would do. I thought maybe I'd be like, eh, no, I do, but I wouldn't. I would do. You just would that. do that until I said Joe McIntyre's in the room. But- what? 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 <laughs> that's what you would sound like. That's exact. <laughs> and, and you would sound like a cat. You would do the cat scream, which I can't do. <laughs> but you would. You would. You would. <laughs> That's what you would do. Fuck. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. You know me so well. I it's do. making me cry. <laughs> oh my god. That's what you would do. So yes, I would. Look, I'm crying. <laughs> oh my god. That's like what happened when I think Donnie tweeted at us or tweeted us something and I called you. <laughs> no, I texted you and I was like, Nikki, Nikki. And then I called you. What, what, what is, what's happening? What happened? What's going on? But like, that, it's like you try to say the word before you get the word out. So that's what you would do. I mean, I don't know that that's going to happen. No, but that was just a fun, that was just a fun, like, scenario. But that's how it would go down if it did. Uh, yeah. But that's, like, my luck right there. That's my luck right that's there. That's how it would go down if it did. Oh, and my gosh. And I would, I would have it all on video. Yes, you would. We could share it with all of y'all. Maybe. Oh, gee. Maybe not. <laughs> we might have to keep that one for ourselves. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, that was great. <laughs> so, want to get into some stories? Let's do that. All right. So... We received a really pretty interesting comment. Yeah. On the CoverGirl episode. Right. Wasn't expecting it. Kind of out of left field. It was like way out of left, like, 
Definitely. Like, like, where'd you come from? Right. So what had happened was this one girl had commented, and I now I don't have it in front of me. We should tell them about being in the video. We were the girls on the bridge or something like that. And I knew exactly what they were talking about. <laughs> and again, I can't remember exactly what the comment was, but... But it was like a conversation like right. between them right. on our post. It was awesome. Yeah. So I reached out to them and I said, listen message me. I want to talk to you guys about this. Right. Tell us everything. So I got them all in a chat and we went through the whole uh, story with them. And so I took their story that they gave me and I put it into a story. And here it is. So I'm going to read it for you. Perfect. So this is the story of Amelia, Terry Ann. Is it Eileen? Or it's Eileen. I think so. Eileen and Danielle. It's a little video you might know called I'll Be Loving You Forever. And the scene? New York City. The year? 1989. It was a good year. It was a good year. The video? Like I said, I'll Be Loving You Forever. So Amelia, Terri Ann, uh, um, Eileen and Danielle, they're all from New York City. And they were born and raised in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. So they're pretty familiar with the city. Whoops. Hit that microphone right there. Whoops. So, um, Amelia and her sister Terry Ann were shopping in New York City with their mom and their godmother, and they went to get pizza on Clinton Street. Um, when they were there, all of a sudden, they saw Joe and Donnie walking in to order. Could you, I mean, can you imagine? No. Nope, me either. And like, they maybe just couldn't maybe get up the guts to be like, hey, Joe. Hey, Donnie, may I have a slice of your pizza? pizza I wonder if it was the pizza yeah. that they were eating outside. That's what I was thinking. Is it the pizza? Maybe. I think it was. OMG. Were they at the pool place? Pool place? The billiards place. When they were eating the pizza? Yeah. Weren't they eating it at the billiards place? They too? were outside, I think. Oh, that's right. On the corner. With people. Right. Why didn't anybody stop by and say, hey, John, can I have a slice of that pizza? I would have. I like cheese. I did too. It looked pretty good. It looked like pretty good pizza. It was it looked nice and gooey. hot. Gooey. Those girls were all about the pizza. Yep. I didn't see any of them eat John's it. John's like, do you see this pizza? It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> see how that mozzarella just stretches? This is some, this is the best pizza in New York City. <laughs> is it? Is that, was that place the best pizza in New York City? We want to know. The place on Clinton Street there. <laughs> you know that place there. You know that place. There's probably like 10, <laughs> 10 pizza places. After that, um, Amelia and Terry Ann went and grabbed their friends, Eileen and Danielle. So I just want to pause here for a second because that's a really awesome thing to do. Yeah, it is. I don't know as if I would have the gumption. Is that the right word? The tenacity? The wherewithal? The wherewithal? To be like, hold the phone, time out. I need to get my friends. I need to get my friends. It's not that I'm a bad friend, it's just that I don't think in those situations sometimes because I'm doing exactly what Brooke just said I did in the previous scenario. What? Who? But then, but Joe and Donnie had left. Right. So, I would think that you would, like, if they left, you'd be like, oh my god, I gotta get my friends. I gotta collect myself. And then, like, let's go find them. I like that. Yes, you're right. We probably would, because this is New York City. So right. we gotta go find them. They're, they must be somewhere in the city. Well, they're could be too far. Right. They're just hanging out. They're walking, I'm right. assuming. So when they got back, so first, Danielle and Eileen, they really didn't believe them. I probably wouldn't either. I'd be like, I think you saw an imposter. I don't think that was Donnie Wahlberg. I think you saw I want ghost. proof. So um, when they met back with Amelia and Terry Ann's mom and godmother... They discovered that their mom and godmother had overheard where the guys were headed to. So they let the group know they're off. Guess where they are? The Williamsburg Bridge. Good old New York City. So guess where they went? The Williamsburg Bridge. The DM Street they did. <laughs> they went right there. So when they got there, they were pretty shocked to see that the guys were really there. I would be too. I'd be like, hold the phone. There they are. And they also saw that there were some other girls there. So that was kind of cool. So they were talking to the girls, and then all of a sudden some men yelled, Hey, we're shooting over here! 
And then the guys started to make their way over. And they were, like, ecstatic. That's so fun. That's where I would have started jumping up and down or something. Stupid. You would have? Uh, like, if probably. they were walking towards you, you would jump up and down? <laughs> probably. While they were looking at you, oh, walking probably. towards you? Probably. Not now. But, like, well, when I was well. leaving. <laughs> Might make a little cat ah! noise. <laughs> the beer. Yeah, I dumped it all over you. I'm really <laughs> sorry. I got really excited that you guys listen. This is one thing that you need to make absolutely so, sure that you know ahead of time. <laughs> and I'm really sorry to pause this amazing story. And I'm sorry that we went on that tangent. But we promise we will come right back to it because it's an amazing story and you'll love it. But just a time out here for a second. Because you guys need to know this because you can't get pissed off at me. You can't. Because you're going to know ahead of time, so just keep your distance. Brooke, you may proceed. If they ever throw anything into the crowd, like a rose, <laughs> just p- put your hand over your drink. And your eyes. <laughs> like, like, take cover. Because it was Boys to Men, first act on the stage. Maybe the second song. <laughs> and they threw a rose out. Into the crowd, a lovely rose. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Nikki jumps up to catch the rose. I rebounded that. And I boxed you out at the same time. Yeah, knocks into me, <laughs> which in turn knocked half my beer all over the front of my shirt. And we were so like, sorry. and we were like, like 12 minutes in. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I felt awful. And you know what? You didn't even get mad. No. You just looked at me and you said, I should have known better. I should have known better. So, <laughs> guess what? When we saw Boys to Men again, this last time. <laughs> yes. You know what I did? When the roses came out? <laughs> I sat <laughs> back. I just, I was at my bar stool. We were on our bar stools. And I just sat back. I did too. For a little bit. For a little while. You got a rose. It was a pity rose. <laughs> and so did the girl next to me. Mm. I just sat back. <laughs> and then Michelle gave me her rose. She did. <laughs> Michelle was like, here, you can have my rose. My cat will eat it. No, that was Amy. Oh, was it Amy? Yes. Yeah. That was cute. So. That was right. She was like, here, Brooke. Have that my was rose. Sweet. <laughs> so, yeah. That, I just tend to, I'm all elbows. <clears throat> So, like, if I elbow you, or... It, it's it's serious. She's all elbows. She has, like, ten. It's, like, an accident. I don't mean to do it on purpose. I elbow people all the time, and especially the close quarters <laughs> of the ship. I'm so scared. Well... Somebody's gonna be like, hey. They're gonna pick a fight? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that that's why we need to kind of, like, you know, chill. I'm not just chill. I'm just... I'm but I mean, really, like, but I mean, look at me. What? I'm pretty solid. I mean, really going to try to pick a fight with me? Oh, somebody would. They better back up off me. It might be bigger than you. JK. JK, I'm not, I'm not a fighter. I'm no. a lover. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Nikki is not a fighter. No, I'm definitely not. I would I would not. I would lose. But challenge her on a dance-off? Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. Yeah. Okay, so, so sorry for that. We're going to finish the story. Yeah. So, they're on the Williamsburg Bridge, right? Is that where we were? Yeah. And the guys were like, hey, we're shooting over here. And so the girls were, you know, taking pictures and chatting with the guys. And that, my friends, is what you see in the beginning of the video. I'll be loving you forever. They had no idea they were being recorded. No clue. Which I think that makes it even better. Yeah, absolutely. That was real. That was was legit. It wasn't staged. It It was like... They couldn't have asked for a better moment. Right. It was awesome. And I always remembered, as soon as they said we were the girls on the bridge, or what, I knew, I knew exactly who they were. Actually, I think they only said we were the girls in the beginning of the video. And I was like, I know exactly who you are. That's very cool. Yeah. So here's the rest of the story. So after all of that went down, Danny ended up going up to Danielle and asked what they were doing the next day. And of course, she replied, nothing. And then Danny said they'd be filming the second part of the video at an all boys school, which was Xavier High School, and that they should all come. Could you imagine? Hey, Brooke, what are you doing tomorrow? Not much, Danny Wood. How about you come to this all boys school? Xavier High School, you you familiar? 
I am how, familiar. How would you come? How would you come? Let's and- pretend I'm 17. I'd love to come to the all-boys high school. <laughs> <laughs> how would you come and you can see us shoot a video? How's that sound? I'd pee my pants. <laughs> Could you and even I, and then imagine? I'd be, there. I'd be there. Could you even imagine? Mm-mm. First, I'd be like, excuse me. Are you talking to me or somebody behind me? Like, what? Hello? Wait. Who? What? <laughs> All right. So being able to see how a video was done was an amazing opportunity for these girls. And when they got there, however, they were very surprised to see that there were a bunch of girls already there because <laughs> it had been announced that there was a video shooting. On the radio. On the radio. So... Then all of a sudden, all these girls showed up. So they had to act the wait outside, and it was pretty chilly. And I guess they were saying, like, their toes were like... I wonder what time of year this was. I didn't actually ask them I don't that. know. I don't think there was any snow on the ground. I didn't there. see any snow, no. But they were playing basketball with no hoop. True that. What in the world? And then dodgeball with the basketball? That's dangerous. That's straight up danger zone material. Yeah, it is. You could knock your teeth out. You could. That would not be good. That was close with Jordan. If he had a duct, a ball right in the head. Oh, goodness. All right. So they remember the guys and their road manager, Johnny Wright, coming in and out of the at one point, And then Amelia ended up following John to the nearby bodega. They let me know. That means grocery store. Yeah. That was very nice of you because there was, there was a little while ago that I was like, what's a bodega? Not too long ago. I didn't know what it was. Do you know how I knew what a bodega was? What? I don't remember what it, what game, what it was called. It wasn't... F- it wasn't Farmville, but it was like one of those type of games on Facebook. Cityville. Was it Cityville? And they had a bodega. I need to not and, talk about how many games I played. And you know how I knew it was a grocery store? How? Well, because, it, I mean, it was a bodega, but like out front, it had like, it had like bins and there was like apples and like, like French bread, oh, like bread, like that. Yes. You know, the bread. <laughs> so um, the, the amount of the girls had grown to at least 200 at one point. Um, and you see that during the concert part of the video, which, like, yeah. we just watched it. And Bridget, there's it, a lot of people. There's a lot. Um, and Danielle even has a picture, and it's going to be on the website, so make sure you go look at it. Um, it's the surprise on John's face. Like, whoa, there's a lot of girls here. Yeah. He does look very surprised. He does. So um, the girls were there all day, and it was really awesome, they said, to see how a video was filmed and how much time goes into taping. And there was even a choreographer. Um, At the end, all the guys went into a room to unwind and then made their way out to the few of them that had stayed behind. So they ended up staying behind. That must have been probably a long time. I bet it was. They, like, went in to, like, relax. Right. And they were very sweet and gracious, and they took tons of pictures and chatted with the girls and signed autographs and posters and jackets, which, that's awesome. So these girls... There's four of them. Mm-hmm. They ended up being able to meet them a few more times back That's in the cool. 90s. And they've even met them today. Yep. And it's, they like they said, it's one of the perks of living in New York City because they still live there. And they're still best friends. That's awesome. They're still best friends. They go on the cruise. We're going to meet them on the cruise. Will we see you on Cruise 10, girls? We hope to see you on Cruise 10. Absolutely. What if this is like the first episode that Joe listens to? If he does listen to it. Um, I can't wait to hear what you're going to do when he walks into our room while you sleep. So... I love this story, and we appreciate you guys, Amelia, Terri Ann, Eileen, and Danielle. We love you. We do forever. So, um, we will see you on the cruise. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it. And make sure you guys check out our website because we have all their pictures. Yes. And you have to see them because they're awesome. There are some like awesome, There's awesome one pictures. really awesome picture. It's like, obviously like take it like a takeout of the video. Mm, yeah. Because Joe wasn't in that jacket. Yeah. How you doing? Takeout? Outtake? Outtake. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so you can read uh, Gabby and yeah. Jen's cruise story. We have Gabby and Jen's cruise story. Woo woo! I'll be reading that for you. I'm ex- oh, so this this one's an ode to the cruise announcement that we will be when you guys are listening to this. Yes. <sighs> oh my gosh! Like this very moment, if you're listening, like this very moment, this very moment, we could be like freaking out, trying to get a cabin, trying to get our choice cabin. Trying to get a cabin. Well, first our choice. Well, our one, two, three, four, five choice. And then any cabin. We just want to get on the boat. That's right. I think we're going to be successful, though. I feel good. You feel good about this? I feel really good about it. 
I okay. feel really good. I'm going to color code things. I feel really good that we're going to be here together doing it. So I think that we're going to be good. So, yeah, I'm excited. So I want to hear this story. All Gabby right. and Jen. Let's Gabby hear this Jen. cruise story. I'm ready for it. Gabby writes, Hi, Nikki and Brooke. My name is Gabby, and I wanted to share our first cruise experience. I already know this email is going to be long, as I can be a bit long-winded, so I'm just going to try and hit the highlights of the story. I'm excited for long-windedness. You just go We ahead. are long-winded. Oh, yeah, we are. So, we cool. I turn a two-minute story into a two-hour session. <laughs> My BFF Jen and I have worked together for about 10 years. We were always friendly, but NKOTB changed our work friendship to a full-blown sister BFF situation. Jen is a few years younger, 33, and I'm 37. She was introduced to NKOTB at a very young age and attended her first concert when she was four with her mom and uncle. That is the coolest. You had a very cool mom and uncle. Absolutely. I've been a fan since I was about eight years old, and I have been a Jordan girl ever since. Jen started off as a John girl, then Donnie, and is now a Joey girl. (laughs) I attended my first concert in 2008. Jen moved back to Detroit about two years ago, and I'm still in Las Vegas. Distance hasn't changed our friendship one bit, and quite frankly, it just means we get to travel more when the guys tour. We have attended about 22 New Kids on the Block concerts events together. Holy cow, I'm so jealous. Including the Walk of Fame star ceremony and three cruises. I need to just take that in for a second. That's a lot. That's awesome. That is awesome. Ugh. The story I want to share is our first cruise. Concert and cruise goals right there. In 2014. It departed from New York and went to Bermuda. It was also the first cruise that had the Rock This Boat crew on board. Veteran cruisers have said that the combination of the Lido deck layout and TV cameras made it the worst cruise. Having been our first cruise, Jen and I loved almost every minute of it. We have no idea what to expect, so everything was a shiny and new experience. I should mention that when we made the decision to cruise, we told each other it was a one-time thing. Fast forward to day one of the 2014 New Kids on the Block cruise, where we stood in what seemed like a never-ending line in a hot cruise terminal. While we stood there, tired, hot, and pretty miserable, complaining about how our line wasn't moving, Joy McIntyre walked right by next to us. (laughs) And by that, I mean about two or three rows away from the line we were in. But it was the closest either of us had ever been to a new kid, and saying, right next to us makes for a better story. (laughs) <laughs> that was the exact moment we both decided we would cruise again and again and again and again. <laughs> Day one of the ship was interesting. They start the sail away party immediately after the muster drill, which is another hot and miserable experience. So you end up running up the stairs from deck three to the Lido on deck nine with about 2,500 blockheads. I don't know how we did it, but Jen and I found ourselves pretty close to the main stage for sail away. Donnie kicks things off with the oath. From there, our senses are overloaded. There is so much going on and we don't know what to do, what to focus on. Suddenly, Donnie is walking right in front of us. This time, it was actually right in front of us as he heads towards one of the side stages. Jen and I can hardly contain our excitement. I'm not sure how long the sail away party lasted, but when there were no signs of the guys, we decided to head to our cabin to freshen up for the game show and grab some dinner. That's when we basically bumped into Danny. He was standing in the doorway taking pictures. We officially have our first pictures of the new kid. How is this only a couple of hours into day one? Night one was masquerade night. Although it was fun, it was pretty uneventful for us. Day two, this was by far the best day on the ship for us. It was a picture day for group A. We didn't have a photo group, so we headed to the room of doom to find a group. I, of course, wanted to stand with Jordan, and Jen wanted to stand with Donnie. We knew this would be a long shot. We walked around the room where girls stood holding signs indicated what spots were free in their groups. Not a single Jordan or Donnie. The last girl we saw had a sign with Jordan and Danny on it. I look at Jen. She looks at me and says, fine. You're lucky I like you. Aww. We figured at least this way one of us would get to stand next to her guy. Truthfully, Jen was happy to stand next to Danny. We both would have been happy sitting next to any of the guys. I feel that way too. I do too. But come on, I was not going to pass up a chance to stand next to Jordan. Don't worry, Jen. Eventually got her Donnie photo. Oh, I'm glad. Another never-ending line, we stand for hours getting to know the other eight members of our photo group who are all friends and have cruised before. When they find out it's not just our first cruise but our first meet and greet, they start trying to prepare us for what to expect, which truthfully made us more nervous. The butterflies were in full force when we made it into the room. There they were, all five new kids just standing there, and we were about to hug all of them. Danny was first. Even through the nerves, I managed an awkward hug. Then Joey, who I actually managed to say hi to. Then Jordan. I was standing with him for the photo, so this is where I stopped. Stop moving, stop breathing, and basically lost the ability to speak. I managed an awkward side hug, but couldn't for the life of me look him in the face. I looked terrified in our picture. Aww. They snap two pictures and we quickly quickly move on. John gives us each the biggest hug and makes you feel like he's been your friend for years. Finally, we get to Donnie, who has a way of making you feel like you're the only person in the room and hugs you like he's been waiting all day to see you. It's truth. Ouch. He kissed my cheek or forehead, I'm not sure which, and just hugged me. Jen, 
who was adorably short, got a love you from him while he rested his chin on her head. There were two girls between Jen and I, so I waited for her to finish getting through the line. When she got to me, we managed to take about two steps before Jen could no longer contain her excitement anymore. She squealed and broke out into what we now call her flash dance, right there in full view of all five new kids, their security team and cameraman. It was embarrassingly awesome. That's awesome. I want to see this flash dance. Can can we see it? Is it on video? Please tell me it's on video. We need the video. Please. Later in the day, we were on the Lido deck where a crowd had formed. Somehow we missed that there would be an afternoon deck party. I'm not sure how we managed it, but we ended up standing against one of the backstages. While Donnie entertains the crowd from the main stage, the rest of the guys scattered around for selfies and autographs. And there he was. Joey McIntyre was sitting right in front of us. Uh. Jen and I each got a selfie and autograph. We wanted to make sure others got the same opportunity, so we decided to move. This is easier said than done. Trying to get away from the stage became impossible, so we started helping other girls make their way up front for a selfie. It worked for a while. Everyone was working with each other, helping those in the back get to the front, then helping them move over for the next girl. As expected, there are always one or two girls that ruin it for everyone. In this case, it was a girl who kept trying to give Joe a pair of pants. Oh, good grief. He wasn't into it and decided to move to another stage. Why? What? Why? Why do that? Don't do that. I mean, just don't. Sorry. Just Just don't. don't. Just no. The theme- Hard pass. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Joe said. Yeah, that's what he did. He said, now I'm moving. Yeah. I won't get, I'm not going to give him my underwear. <laughs> well, first of all. First of all. That's, I mean. That's I, never going to happen. I, like, I don't want to be, but I know what you wear for underwear. <laughs> Stop. I'm not going, that's not going to happen. But I just, I'm so nervous. I'm going to do something like that's, everybody's going to be like, oh, that girl. You know, I just don't, want, I won't let you. I don't feel like I would, but I just, I'm so scared that I'm going to, that I'm not going to know. Well, like, I have do, common I'll courtesy. You. you know that. Like, I'm, right. s- but I'm like, like over- I really like, I really liked her whole, like, We got our pictures, we got our autographs, and we wanted to help other people get up to the front. Yes, yes. So, like, that's nice. That's the way it should be. It should. We should all be like that. Yep. The theme for night two was Cowboy Night. Oh, I've seen those pictures. Wow. The best night on the cruise. We heard about people camping out and didn't want to be those girls. After dinner, we walked out to the Lido for some drinks and noticed it was pretty quiet, even though it was about 9 p.m. When we started to see that people were saving their spot by the main stage, we decided it was a good idea to make our way over. We managed to stand directly in front of the main stage without camping out all day. Wow. The guys came out in full cowboy gear and looked amazing. Yeah, they did. We couldn't believe how close they were to us. I snapped so many pictures that night. At one point, I was trying to take a selfie to show how close I was to the stage. While I fiddled with the lighting on my phone, Joe sat down on the stage directly behind me to get in my picture. (gasps) At some point in the night, Joe jumped into the pool in just his Calvins. This meant he left remnants of his clothes on various stages. Johnny ended up picking up Joe's belt and wearing it for a while. Later, he took it off and walked right up to me and handed it to me. Holy crap, I now own a belt that both Johnny and Joe wore. That blows my mind. That blows my mind. It would go to here on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, let me put it around. Oh, nope. That's not going to fit. <laughs> I think we were out until nearly 6 a.m. The next day we were, in, we were in port in Bermuda. We decided to stay on the ship to sleep. Looking back, we both wish we would have gotten off the ship. After all, when will we ever be in Bermuda again? Night three was fun, but not eventful for us. It rained, so they closed the roof on the Lido, which made it incredibly hot and humid. I opted to turn in early, but Jen stayed out for a while. Lucky for me, nothing epic happened. Day four, our last full day on the ship. Group B had their photo op, so we knew the guys would be preoccupied for most of the morning. We walked the ship to check out the door decorations. When we got back to our cabin, we couldn't believe it. Danny had at some point found the time to sign our door decorations. What? Danny was at our door and we missed it. So one thing that stuff made sure to point out... Is that you need to take time. Don't forget to take time to go through and look at people's door decorations because it's important. So it's a big part of it. Stuff. I think. I think that list is still like in fresh in my mind. Yeah. I love it. Just if you don't know what we're talking about, go back and listen. Yeah. Steph and her 10 cruise don'ts, which right. are actually quite helpful. Very helpful. Very helpful. That afternoon and evening, Joey had duets at dusk, and Donnie officiated a wedding, which was part of Rock This Boat. He hung out on Lido afterwards and took a million selfies. We now have our Donnie selfies. Duets after dark. If that ever comes back, little islands in the stream. That is what we are. You up for it, Joe? I'm up for it. Joe, why don't you let us know on Twitter if you're up for it. <laughs> are you listening, Joe? Maybe when I met you. I want to sing the Kenny Rogers part, though. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
The GPS party was amazing. We managed another selfie this time with Danny, and we stayed on the Lido deck with Donnie until after sunrise and watched the ship as the ship cruised past the Statue of Liberty. We knew sleep wasn't happening since we had to be off the ship soon, so we opted to grab breakfast in the buffet. As we sat there in a zombie-like state, Jen looks up from her pancakes and says, Oh, hey, it's John. I perk up and shriek, Where? Only to find that he is standing at the booth directly behind me. Jen is staring at him, confused, because he had a stuffed monkey in his front pocket. (laughs) I, on the other hand, can't believe she hasn't taken a picture. Forget the monkey, take a picture. Finally, I ask her, are you just going to sit there or are you going to take a picture? She finally takes a picture. Now, I thought it was understood that I would be in the pic with John behind me. Instead, we have a picture of just John with a monkey in his pocket. (laughs) Either way. I love these girls. I know, they're fun. Geez, could I have made this email any longer? Well, maybe just a little. We cruised again in 2015 and 2016. We decided to skip 2017 so we could do multiple shows for the tour. That's smart. Although the shows were awesome, we both regret missing the cruise. Not smart, I guess. Never mind. <laughs> there is no way we'll miss 2018. I don't think either of us could handle it. Anyway, I hope you liked our story. If we could offer any advice for your first cruise, it would be to go in with no expectations and to it. enjoy your time. Don't dwell on getting a selfie or being next to the stage. This is an easy way to miss out on fun and meeting some pretty awesome people. We have met some pretty amazing people that we still keep in touch with and look forward to seeing at concerts on the, or the cruise. Hopefully we get a chance to meet you girls and say hi in person on this year's cruise. You will. And there Gabby are pictures. and Jen, I love you guys. I know. I, and- really, seriously, I want, I want to meet you on the cruise. So please come say hi to us, please. I love these pictures. And they had the sheets on their door. I love it. So we got an idea. Christina actually gave us an idea for our door decoration. I'm just going to say it out loud because yeah. it doesn't matter. To use the curtains, the new kids on the block curtains on our door and make the whole door a window with the curtains on the door and the paper plates. That's awesome. And then we'll put paper plates like on the walls. That's I think that's awesome. awesome. So we got to get curtains. That's the only thing we have to get is curtains. We got to find Is that them. okay that we're like saying this out loud? I mean, everybody knows what we're doing anyway. Right. I think it's fine. That was amazing. That was awesome. I freaking Thank love that so story. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much. And I really can't wait to meet you guys. These pictures are amazing. I know. Look at that picture of Joe. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. I like that polo shirt. Hey, he's into polos like I was. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Now I am the queen of the V-necks. I like a good V-neck. Yeah, I do too. Not like a deep V. I'm good. I uh, See, I don't really have cleavage. So like I, I can do a deep V. Oh my goodness. It's just the way, like, I don't know if it's my bras or something. I've tried, like, the offset ones. I, it's still, like, all, it's, like, all. Yeah, I don't. Well, I just, I especially don't know. Because I'm wearing my comfy bra. Even when I wear, but when I wear a sports bra, well, I still have it. But it's, like, I, I'll probably wear sports bras the whole cruise. Yeah. I don't even care if I'm a uniboob. Um, who, no, you want to be comfortable. I love sports bras. Plus, you know, like, I'll be active, so. <laughs> I'm gonna be dancing all night. <laughs> it's like I get, I gotta keep those puppies under control. Get all dance, get dance, dance, dance. I'm gonna be dancing all night long, all day, all night, all day, all night. Well, you have to sleep some. With pizza in my hand. With pizza <laughs> in your hand. <laughs> pizza and a root beer. Pizza and a root beer. Pizza root beer. Pizza root beer. Hey, can we can we get a soda pass? Yes. Because guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna not drink soda until until the cruise. The cruise. And I'm going to just drink all the root beer. You'll be sweating root beer. (laughs) I freaking love root beer. Why? You'll be sweating root beer. I like natural root beer. But I like the bite. I need the bite. You know what I like? Diet Diet Coke. I like like that. And I like ginger ale, but not like Schweppes. No. I like Canada Dry. I don't like Schweppes ginger ale. Nope. I don't like either. I like ginger ginger. Like, give me some ginger. Like, hard ginger, you don't like it. I do not like ginger. Neither does Kevin. But it's I like, like, I like spicy. Canada Dry ginger ale. But it's good for you. Like, if you if you have ginger when you're, like, not feeling well, it's supposed to, like, be good yeah. for you, I guess. I drink it every day. It's like carbonated water with ginger, really, is what it is. Your things? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like those. It's good. It's good for you. I want to read Rachel's story. Great. How's that sound? Sounds good. Dear Brooke and Nikki. <laughs> what? Brooke and Nikki. Oh, right, 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 right. Hi, I'm new. I found your podcast through Reality TV Pod. Thanks, Jody. What's up, Jody? We haven't talked about Jody in a long time. I know. What's up, Jode? What's going on? Is it okay if I call you Jode? I say it's okay because I call people Jess all the time. Never call them Jessica. Always call them Jess. And they're okay with it? I don't know. I think so. Let me know if it's not okay. Oh, Jess from the past story? We're friends. 
She says that's legit. <laughs> She's we cool. she told the Pearl Jam story. Yeah. She wants me to go to LA because she lives there and she's going to that concert. Oh, she is? Yeah. So she's the Joe. We're going to meet up. That's exciting. I really think I'm going to go. If I can, if I can swing getting to Boston, Mm -hmm. I'm going. I'm like 92, eight now. 92%. Right. Okay. 8%. Right. (laughs) That's like a B plus. I love listening to lifelong friends talk about growing up in the nineties. After listening to a few episodes, I've been flooded with memories of being 14 years old and discovering new kids on the block. Oh. I hope it's okay to share my story. Um, yes, please. And like, if you've got other memories that are flooding, we want to hear them. We want these 90s and 80s stories. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, keep them coming. Oh, I keep thought you coming. were like, hustle it up. Let's go. No. <laughs> um. I've been flooded with memories of being 14 years old and discovering new kids on the block. I hope it's okay to share my story. I already read that. I first saw a Hang and Tough album poster in my small town, Walmart, in North Florida. I say North Florida because it's very different than South Florida. Think Alabama. I bought the Hang and Tough <laughs> tape and VHS and all of the music videos on the spot. This was the summer before I started high school and I felt like I had found my identity. In the land of Garth Brooks fans, I was a new Kids on the Block fan. The first day of high school, I learned that I had a class called Personal Clothing. Whoa! (laughs) That's awesome. Basically, you learn to sew, which turned out to be very useful. I Mm -hmm. really wish that I had this class. Let me just tell you. Well, I noticed a few other girls in the class had new kids gear. We called them new kids. Not sure if that's because I'm the older end of fans or if it's a Southern thing. No, we call them new kids. We call them new kids. Yeah. I still call them new kids. Yeah. Um, what else would you call them? I call them new kids. But what else would we call them? In KOTB. Oh, I call them new kids. Or new kids on the block. If you're talking to somebody who doesn't know who new kids are. I would always be like the new kids. I like the new kids. I like new kids. I like those new kids. I like them now. <laughs> I like those, uh, Seasoned men. Yeah. Remember that video? The one that we watched? <laughs> they were saying that guy was like preaching. Yes. And he was saying, new kids. Um, These girls were older than me. One was a sophomore and one was a senior. I was so excited to have girls to share my enthusiasm and thought we would be fast friends. Instead, I noticed that once they saw my John Knight book cover, they refused to talk to me. What? Okay. Every day, they would look over at me and whisper to each other. I was a little confused about what I did wrong. I was trying very hard to be nice, but was getting nowhere. One morning, the sophomore says to the senior, Are you excited about the concert this weekend? The senior responded, Yeah, I can't wait to see new kids Saturday night. Being super naive, I bought it. I went home and begged my dad to see if he could get tickets. My poor dad even actually tried to find tickets. After a day or two of asking around, my dad said, Honey, I've asked around and no one has any info about a New Kids on the Block concert. Is it possible that those girls are playing a joke on you? I felt... What the hell? Kids are mean. (sighs) I'm mad at these girls. Real mad. Real mad. What if they're in our group? You know what? Do you ever think about that? Rachel deserves an apology. Well, she does. And I think about that sometimes. Like, when we read things like this, I wonder, like... What if the girl that gave tried to give Joe her panties? I don't like that word. I don't like that word at all, and I just said it. Oh, I hate that word. You know wash your mouth out with soap? (laughs) You know what you did. No, but I thought the same thing. Like, what if she's in our group? I'm always curious about that stuff. If you are... I hate... Now I feel bad. I feel bad that I said something about that, because maybe that was her thing. I don't know. Just don't do that, though. Like, he didn't like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what you did. He didn't like it. No. But these girls. Mm-mm-mm. I felt so humiliated. I also felt so lonely. Why couldn't I share my joy and excitement for five boys from Boston with these girls? Yeah, why not? Anyway, I'm happy to say it all had a happy ending. Eventually, I won them over. Maybe it was when I helped one of them thread her showing machine. <laughs> <laughs> showing machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh god maybe it was when i helped one of them thread her sewing machine they warmed up to me before too long and they were talking about new kids writing notes to each other about new kids talking on the phone and sharing buttons they admitted it was because i liked john and the senior also liked john they even apologized for the fake concert and felt really bad about it the senior gave me a makeover for homecoming oh, that, i guess this turned out okay after all it did 
Big hair, lots of makeup. No tricks this time. She made me up nice. Best of all, we all went to see Expose in concert. Yes. Oh, yeah, you did. That's awesome. That is awesome. Did they sing To the Point of No Return? Did they? I'm pretty sure, didn't they? I don't know. Um, my dad drove us all, and my dad drove all of us. I truly believe the best part of being a New Kids fan was sharing the excitement with other fans. That's why your podcast is so much fun. Rachel, thank Aww. you. I just wanted to add that I have four sons now, and I kind of feel like I'm managing a boy band. I have the shy one, the heartthrob, the goofball, and the baby face. Aww. Oh, funny how you prepare, how, how funny how youth prepares you for life. Thanks, ladies. Well, Rachel, thanks, that was Rachel. Awesome. That was awesome. You ready for Jade's story? All right, this is Jade's story. I've tried to pinpoint the moment. You all know the moment I'm talking about because you had one too. The moment I fell in love with five bad brothers from the Bean Town land. Five bad brothers from the Bean Town land. We all know you sang that in a certain melody. Anyway, back to the moment I became a blockhead. You know what you did. It's down to two. Which is the chicken and which is the egg? I'm not sure, but I'll tell it the way I think it happened. I remember lying on the couch gossiping on the phone to a friend. The cord of the phone tangled in my toes as I lazed away a Saturday morning. On the TV was Video Hits, a Aussie TV show that recapped the Australian music charts for the week. And on came CoverGirl. I remember distinctly commenting to my friend about how adorable it was that the singer got that cute little girl up. I mean, I was all of maybe four years older than her, but I clearly thought I was so grown up and that was adorable. I also remember us discussing whether Donnie was hot or not. We both agreed he was hot. Duh. The other possible moment saw me standing in the front of the vinyls in sight and sound at the local Target with money to burn. <laughs> I was buying my first record and I chose Hang and Tough. I don't recall going there especially to buy it, just choosing it instinctively. I certainly didn't know the boys. I had to go home and write their names next to the bl- next to the back photo, the one on the subway in gray lead pencil. I do remember right then locking in what to this very day remains true. Would you like to look at it right now? Because it's right there. It is right there. It's like right in front of your eyes. It's like right in view. That, that's what she bought. I do remember right then locking in what to this very day remains true. I was and am a Joey girl from the moment I wrote his name next to his cute little face. Mm. How I found out their names, I'm not sure. I mean, this was pre-Google, a time when Australia was even further away than it is now, thanks to no internet. I kind of think my eldest brother helped me with the names. Funny, given he became my biggest teaser regarding my undying new kid's obsession. My obsession and adoration grew. There are flashes of memories of people saying I'd grow out of it. It was a phase. I guess they'd feel silly now. I would write letters to my American pen pal, Jen, declaring my undying love for Joe, certain that given the chance, if we cross paths, he'd be just as smitten with a small town Aussie girl as I was him. I included him and his entire family in order in my prayers at night. I wrote, learned his sibling's name in order, a skill I no longer possess, but paid tribute to in a play last year. I'll explain that later. I would visit the news agency in my small town, population 2000, and scour the pages of smash hits in the imported magazines, Bop, Tiger Beat, and the like. I usually had money for one or two. The imported ones cost about $9. Oh, that's a lot of money. Standard now, but in 1990 or so, that was a luxury. But I couldn't go without. I would pull the posters from the magazine and my walls, like many of yours, were completely covered. Plus, of course, one place on my roof above my bed, so the last thing I saw was Joe as I drifted into dreamland. Mm-hmm. I bought what merchandise I could. Again, being at the arse end of the world, Australia didn't get everything that U.S. fans did. I had several t-shirts, and I remember the cassette bubblegum, but aside from that, I don't remember much else. Strangely, I didn't keep much. Until recently, I was a bit of a hoarder, recently embracing minimalism, but I assume I lost them in a few moves I've made. When I couldn't get items, I tried to make my own version. Cringe. (laughs) A pencil case I painted with the USA flag and the letters NKOTB within the stripes that I used throughout my entire secondary school time. Um, I think that's awesome, not cringe. That's awesome. That is awesome. Finishing in 1994 when kids were teasing me about them being has-beens as Take That had come out in Australia then and were the it boy band of that time. I do like Take That. When the boys toured here in 1992, I went to the Melbourne show. Excuse me. Melbourne show. Whoa, is that how you say it? Yes. Melbourne? Melbourne. Oh, that was very good, Brooke Elizabeth. Things like, things you learn as a travel agent. Melbourne. Because you have people come in and they say, I want to go to Melbourne. And you say, excuse me? And they say Melbourne. It's pr- it's pronounced Melbourne. That's how you I know. I think that she'll be, she'll be happy that you pronounce it Melbourne. Um, you didn't say Melbourne like I would have. Well, I did say Melbourne at I first. went to the Melbourne show. <laughs> I did say Melbourne Just first. Just like people say Bangor. Bangor. It is Bangor. If you come to Maine... You're going to Bangor, Maine. Like gore. Right. Bangor. Right. Like Al Gore. Bangor. Like Al Gore. Think Bangor. Al Gore. Bangor. 
adorned in my hand decorated denim jacket. I laminated a picture of Cho, cringe again, laminated, haha, mm-hmm. and my mom sewed it to the back. Then I decorated it with a few patches and badges that I managed to get and fabric paint with various NKOTB statements and adorations. I started painting it green to copy a Joe jacket I saw in a poster, but I got bored and didn't finish that part. <laughs> That's awesome. I wore it with such pride to the concert and other blockheads actually asked me where I bought it. I thought I was so cool. In terms of 1992, the tour us Aussie girls had waited so long for, I worried it wasn't going to happen. When the boys got here, the ludicrous lip sync scandal broke and I was so scared they would cancel the tour and head home. Instead, it seemed to fire them up and I guess put that tour on the map. I don't remember much from the concert, really, more from the day. The boys were awarded this key to Melbourne, my capital city, as Melbourne and Boston are sister cities. They my, are? I guess so. That's really cool. My elder Just sister- like Bangor and Bangor? Yeah. Bangor Wales? Bangor, Maine. My elder sister took me into the city to watch the presentation. They were like little dots in the distance, but I felt so special being in their space. Mm. When the ceremony ceremony was over, the crowd dispersed and it became a treasure hunt for the boys' hotel. We ran to Hilton. We ran to the Hyatt. Girls would ask and get no. Some were sure they were one place and others convinced somewhere else. It was crazy and so exciting for this 14-year-old. We ended up tracking them down. I got to see Jordan and John eating lunch with their mom through windows. Not creepy at all. Danny heading to the bus quickly to head to the gym. I got a blurry blurry pic of Joey on the bus as close as I came to him in 1992. So then life went on. As I said earlier, I continued to adore them even as they were really, even as they really were fading from Australian view in 93, 94. Grunge was everywhere here. My friends loved Nirvana and Pearl Jam and I still loved our boys. I guarantee those boys got me through the trials of teen years. When no one else loved me, they did. I could always escape to my room to play their music and daydream daydream about what could happen if I just met Joe. I am so thankful for them and really, really advocate the importance of connection to music and bands for teenagers. My own 14-year-old son is next level obsessed with Green Day now, and I get it. The level he connects with their lyrics, the happiness their music brings, I get it. So NKOTB disbanded and I went on with life, and of course, they would play on radio from time to time and my heart would skip a beat. I still knew the words and I would stop and listen, but certainly they, they weren't the focus anymore. I still called them my favorite band, strangely enough, considering I wasn't really listening to them or following along. I bought Joey's solo album, but I didn't even know he did an Australian promo tour. I moved to Wagga Wagga. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but excuse me if I'm not. Wagga Wagga? Yeah. For university. A bigger town at 50,000. Should I ask Siri? (laughs) Oh, because he'll say it correctly. Yeah. Siri, how do you pronounce Wagga Wagga? Here's what I found on the web for how do you pronounce Wagga (laughs) Wagga. Waka waka like <laughs> like fuzzy <like> bear. <laughs> waka, how do you waka. spell it? Like W A G G A W A G G A. Siri, how do you pronounce W A G G A W A G G A? Here's what I found on the web for Siri. How do you pronounce Wagu Aga? Wagu Aga. Wagu Waga. Wagu Waga. We're gonna take a minute. We're gonna learn how to pronounce this. Wagu Waga. Is that how you say it? Wagu Waga. Wagu Waga. I moved to Wagga Wagga for university, a bigger town at 50,000, but still a way away from Melbourne and city. So I didn't hear about it, but I've since seen photos from other Aussie blockheads of a city siding, etc. They reformed, but I don't really remember taking notice in 2012 when my elder brother, remember the teaser from earlier, mentioned he'd seen them in the paper they were touring Australia. I am sure my heart stopped and I bought a ticket immediately, but that tour was canceled shortly after my ticket arrived. My heart was broken. I was sure we would never see them down under again. Johnny released a statement reminding Aussie fans to think of the people out of work from the cancellation, but I was selfish and so sad. And then light. NKOTBSB, May 19th, 2013. I went alone. I am so glad I did because I experienced every moment, even in my nosebleed section. I remember walking across the venue, seeing it in the distance, my heart pounding, trying to select the tour t-shirt to buy, then changing into it in the toilet stall so I could wear it and feel like a real fan again. I was so far from the stage, but I didn't care. I was completely happy. And from then, the boys rejoined my life completely. I play their music in the car, and my 14-year-old teases me about the lyrics in a loving teen way. I included them in a play I staged last year. The play was set in 1989 and had an 8-year-old girl who was obsessed with horses. I decided to do a small tweak and change her to being obsessed with NKOTB. She was literally me. One of her lines that I added had her reciting the names of Joy's entire family and miming to Hanging Tough in her bathroom mirror. And last year, I turned 40. Paul and I planned a trip to New York City, and that would have been enough given I dreamed of visiting the Big Apple for so long. But the total package tour was announced, and I thought I'd look and see if there's anything in New York while we were there. 
Paul was up for it. He thought a concert would be fun regardless of the band. I found two dates, Uniondale, New York, 7717, and Albany, New York, 9717. I briefly considered Boston, but we'd made a decision to stay in one place to save on airfares. When you are looking at from the other side of the world at places you've never heard of, it's really hard. I did Google map searches from Manhattan to these places and tried to work it out, deciding Uniondale was closer and worked best with the dates we left. Then buying tickets from a world away also presents a unique challenge. I'd made the decision to attend Uniondale and booked all other New York activities around it. We made the decision to go all in. Paul was like, you're 40. Let's go VIP. Oh, I love Paul. My brother's selling it. Finally, I have money, anxiety, and extra amount was stressing me. When he said to me in six months that extra 500 won't even be a thought. So I chose bar stools and Paul and Paul booked the tickets. But he bought Albany and that didn't work with getting there and other bookings we had. We stressed and worried because of the time difference we couldn't get on to anyone. But the next morning I managed to get through and because 24 hours hadn't passed, they refunded our money and we went ahead and secured our bar stools for Uniondale. Wow. Wow. That's amazing that actually worked out. Yes. Rather serendipitously. I like I love that. I love that word. I stumbled across a post on Facebook saying I should find a photo group. Getting lucky first off, making contact with a great gal. Shout out Marisol. Hey Marisol. Who had two Joey spots, though I did offer to sub Paul for any member. If it helped the group build its numbers. I'm so glad I was able to do this prior to the day. I think it would have been too overwhelming on the day. Oh, I couldn't imagine. That day was perfect. It poured rain. I love rain. And rain in New York City was so romantic and filmic. Paul and I are filmmakers. That's so cool. We went to B&H first, a camera superstore on 9th Avenue that we had been absolutely salivating at the thought of. Paul loves film technology, so he was blissed out. We had breakfast at a traditional dinner, diner, excuse me, close by, French toast and coffee. Our socks and shoes were the only were the only damper as they were soaked, but we trudged on. Next step was working out how to even get to Uniondale. We made our way to Penn Station and tried to navigate the boards of the Long Island Railroad, I guess. Oh. I'm guessing that's what that means. Yeah. But it took a lot of asking for help finally working it out. That train ride was fabulous. I was buzzing. We made plans to find a shopping center, as we call it, a mall as you do, so we could sort out our soak socks. I can handle almost anything, but wet socks make me cranky and I didn't want anything oh, spoiling my mojo. the worst. Yeah. Like, swampy feet? <laughs> yeah, totally. The worst. Once we were at the venue, I met the rest of my photo group. I was nervous, too. My anxiety had me concerned they would think I was backwards Aussie or something, but they were so kind. Penny gave me directions via Facebook Messenger to where the VIP door was located. Alice was genuinely so excited for me meeting the boys for the first time. Jerry fixed my collar before the photo, saying, us girls have to stick together. We were connected by our shared love. Oh, these girls are amazing. They're For like real. Michelle and Amy. Yep. So sweet. Mm. As a Joey girl, I was first in the line. Marisol and Alice, VIP experts, told me to take my time to savor the moment and set the pace for the rest of the group. I hope I did. I think I did. Danny first, a hug and polite banter. Donnie next, perfection. Asked me for Tim Tams, Aussie biscuits. Mm -hmm. And I kicked myself as I had them in the hotel, but had been too nervous to bring them. Then, as Marisol and Alice had predicted, because Donnie loves husbands, as Paul went to shake his hand and tell him he's a big, big fan of Blue Bloods, truth, Donnie insisted he come in for a hug. That cemented it. Paul is a Donnie guy. (laughs) Then we moved on to Jordan. Or a Donnie girl. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) Then John, and finally, my heart in my throat, all sense of where I was dissolving, Ugh. All sense of where I was dissolving. I was standing in front of Joey, 28 years later, 16,794 kilometers, a world apart, a moment I never actually thought would happen, even if I had to pay for it, lol. I fought to stay in the moment to experience it, but it's a blur. I showed him my jacket. Thanks, Mum, for insisting I pack it. He said, no shit, that's cool. Too kind. I mentioned the play and he asked me if I wrote it and we told him about our three kids, two boys and a girl at home in Australia. He said it's important to do things sans kids because it reminds you of who you are. Words to live by, for real. And then it was over, and I was happy because I'd had that, and that would have been enough. The show started, Paul and I love Boys to Men. One Sweet Day is our song, in fact, and our wedding film business name. So when that played, no words. That's cool. That is neat. I nicked out for a beer during Paula's set, but Paul had me had to go because I didn't have my ID on me. In Australia, it's been a long time since anyone asked me for ID. I wasn't used to being asked everywhere in the States. Precautionary. I'm sure, but I'll pretend it's because I was looking so youthful. Nope. Looking so youthful. (laughs) That's what I meant. So the moment the new kids took the stage, I can't even remember exactly. But that feeling, again, pure joy. And it was everything and then some more. 
Barstool seats are the bomb. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe how close I was to them. I mean, they were right there. Arms distance. And this Aussie gal was blissfully happy. I had my banner. I'd bought a pic of the Aussie flag with Joey. I've come from the land down under adorned. Mm -hmm. I'm a polite concert goer, though, and was worried about blocking people's view. But when Remix started and Joey was positioned smack bang in front of me, well, this Australian was loud and proud and held it high. Joey saw it. He looked at me. My heart stopped. He made a gesture that I thought was to hold it high. But then he was on his knees in front of me, ripping it from my hands, tossing it aside, gripping my hand and singing to me. Oh, my gosh. I've seen this video. You have? I asked her for the story. I just realized this right now. Oh, well, I feel like you've talked to her. Yes. Yeah. She's awesome. Um, And this video. I need to see the video. I haven't seen the video. Christine sent it to me. She was like, Nikki, you need to see you got to get this. Story. Maybe I did see this. You got to get this story, Nikki. And I said, Christine, I'm on it. My moment had come. It lasted 15 seconds. I've counted. Joy pulled me in and sang, looked into my eyes. Oh. My hand was gripping his as he leaned back and I slipped on my bar stool. Some blockheads commented on a board later that I looked like I was pawing him. And did I remember he had a wife? I laughed because yes, I remember my beautiful husband was next to me filming it all. And then he let go and everything returned to normal. That was my moment. The show continued and it was sublime. The birthday girl was my new friend, Jerry from the photo line. Gina, another from our photo group had a Joey moment in if you go away and the show kept giving i didn't want it to end but when it did i was complete i was satisfied and i remain so now i have to because seeing them again in any way shape or form is a pipe dream the crew sounds lovely but expensive which i can get around but then add international flights insurance and accommodation and factor in the time i'm a high school teacher and that timing couldn't be worse smack banging kids exams the next time I travel to America, I am taking my kids for the Disneyland dream. So maybe something would line up, but I couldn't be that lucky again. Could I? I think you could. I think you could too. Oh, maybe she could come and do Disneyland and do a Joey solo tour. I do the bop, bop, bop. Do she come to Disneyland? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. You, you, yep. Yeah, you got to book your stuff now. Now. Because you got to be there. Call Brooke. She'll help you book. Because Brooke's a travel agent. But I know how expensive those flights are from Australia. Yeah. I totally get that. That's my dream. That's like my, my number one bucket list. I've, I've always wanted to go there. I really want to do... I want to go there. Let's go to Melbourne. I want to go to Australia. I want to go to New Zealand. I want to go to Fiji. Where's the one place I want to go? Easter Island. That's exactly right. Will I ever get there? Sure. I sent somebody there. There's a crew... Excuse me? One person. One person. Wanted to go to Easter Island. Was What kind of person was it? She was just a single traveler. Woman really? in her mid-fifties. She just wanted to go to Easter Island. Yeah. So I found her a little group that was going. That's awesome. Yeah. Did she go? Yeah. Did she love it? Um, It was an experience. Oh, she didn't like it? No, she did. She She's just traveled all over. So it was like one of the, uh, just another place. Yeah, she enjoyed it. It was like incredible. Wow. Sorry. Um, and I could hope the boys might come back here, but sadly I doubt it. Australia is a long way away and often forgotten or overlooked or just too far. So that 15 seconds, that day is possibly all I'll get. And it's enough. It was everything. It will last me a lifetime. I try to connect on social media. Donnie has liked one of my tweets and even that little gesture made me giddy. It's truly amazing the joy they bring me. I call Enkyo to be my guaranteed happy place. They just make me smile. It's a simple love, but a strong one. I keep one of my signed posters. Yes, Paul gave me his, so I have two. Why he didn't want it is beyond me at work, so that on a bad day, I could just stop and remember that day. I will continue to seek out fellow blockheads online. I love chatting and reading other experiences. I made a video of my experience. It's on YouTube if you look up Feed Our Soul Films, and I am making another one that is kind of a love letter to the boys to thank them for a lifetime of love and joy, for getting me through shitty moments. Ah, teen years are fun. And for giving me 7717. What a day. The best day. I am happy to have found this podcast online. I'm a media and drama teacher, and more podcast listening is part of my 2018 goals. I've been listening whilst exercising, and the time flies, so thanks for that. Oh, yay! I hope you're getting it done! But listening listening to you two talk is like listening to friends chat. I never had a blockhead friend who shared my love, but now, thanks to the podcast and online communities, I do. You absolutely do. Yes, you absolutely do, and hey, 
you know what? Maybe you can come on the podcast. That'd be awesome. How cool would that be? That'd I mean, be, be so cool. We'd have to like line it up. So like the times, it wasn't like crazy time for her, crazy time for us. Right. But like we could do like a intercontinental. Yes, we could. Transcontinental, cool. not intercontinental. Right. Transcontinental, right? Across. Right. Trans. That was an amazing story. It was so well written. Yeah. So thank you so much Jane, for that story. That was amazing. You are amazing. And I bet your accent is so cool. I cannot wait to hear it because I, love I want to accents. hear it. So get in touch with us. Yep. Well, you already did. Maybe we'll get in touch with you. And if you're interested, right. if, you're, if you're interested, let us know. Sounds good. So we received this story. It's a little bit different, but I thought it was necessary. So we're going to close with this one. Cool. Because you know what? It has a really, really good moral of the story cool. or words to live by, more or less. So here we go. So here's Jamie's friendship story. And it's a, it's a really good one. Again, listen up. Words to live by. It was 1997, 1998. My college roommate, a couple friends and I, and we were heavy into the NSYNC Backstreet Boys concert rotation. There were five of us that would go as often as we could afford. Our true loves were the new kids, but since they had broken up, I feel your pain. We were filling the void. Mm. My roommate liked NSYNC better. I was more of a BSB girl. Somewhere in the middle of it all, we turned to each other and made a pact that if NKOTB ever reunited, that we would go together no matter what. We could only dream. Fast forward to the winter of 2009. I was deep into wife and mommyhood. I had two small children and was pregnant again. The nature of my husband's job is such that we move every one and a half to three years, but we had just landed back in our home state. NKOTB had reunited and I had finally gone to my first ever concert the previous fall when we had lived in a different place. So imagine my excitement when I learned that there was going to be a tour stop in our state that spring. I immediately emailed my college roommate and scream typed, New Kids Concert, we have to go! Freak out! Mm -hmm. That's what I would be. That's what I would do. Text! Everything. I eagerly anticipated her response and was completely blindsided by what she said. Yeah, I know. We already have tickets. Yeah, I know. I, I read this today and I was like, what? My reply? Who has tickets? Why didn't you tell me? She responded, the four of us. We thought you'd be too pregnant to go. I was shattered. I would barely be into my third trimester on the day of the concert. Hardly a reason to miss a new kid's concert we had waited years for. There was five of them. I mean, they made a pact. Right. You don't break pacts. No. I don't care how old you are. You don't break them. Goody's never say that. I got the unsaid message. They didn't want me. They had stayed friends while I was away. There was no place for me anymore. I was determined to go anyway and found another friend who wanted to go. The week of the concert arrived and I got a call from my former roommate. She called to say she was sick so I could have her ticket. Not gonna lie, it felt pretty good to say that I didn't need her pity ticket. I was already going with someone else. She actually had the nerve to sound surprised. Growing up, I was very sheltered. Instead of going to parties, I went to church. I had friends at school, but because I wasn't allowed to socialize with many of them outside school, those friendships never really grew. I was half goody two-shoes, church girl, and half normal teenager who just wanted to fit in. I was never popular, just sort of on the fringes of groups. College was my first opportunity to be friends with anyone I wanted. People, similar energy, and interest to mine. I really thought those were going to be my friends for life. The rejection taught me a very valuable lesson. I learned there are two types of friends, friends for a season and friends for a reason. I have gone on to move several times. I've made new friends, some just for a season and some true strong friends who are in my life for a reason. I still see one of those old college girls pretty regularly around the block. Neither of us acknowledges the other. We're not friends anymore. We grew out of that season and that's okay. I have other amazing friends that are in my life now, ones that I may not have ever met if I hadn't had the opportunity to strike out on my own away from my old college friends. We've had some amazing adventures in the past couple years, and for that, I am thankful. Brooke, you are my friend for a reason. That is the truth. Not a friend for the season. No. It'll be a really long season. But we just had this discussion today. Yes, we did. You and I had a long discussion. Here's the thing. This came like at an off- At the right time. I mean, and because you and I had a discussion and there are people that, you know, I just, I, Jamie, like I just, re- like I'm 38 years old. Yeah. And I just realized this. Like I always thought like people were li- lifelong friends. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I've always been like that. And you've always told me. Nikki. Right. You've always been like that. And I've always been like, nope. Because I've just been like, if you're my friend. You're my friend. I'm like Braveheart. I'm all in. Never seen Braveheart. I have never had seen Braveheart either. But I, Is he a good friend? I. <laughs> it looks like he's like a battlefront person. He's passionate. He's a stand-up dude. Yep. That's what he is. Well, hopefully. I don't know. I've I don't know. The movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just like, if you're my friend. You're all in. I'm all in. I'm 100% all yep. in. And then I don't realize that there are people that aren't. Right. And that are just like, oh, I just like you when it's convenient for me to like you. I'm all set with that. Hard pass. Right. But the friends for a season, sometimes they come in and come out and it's like no big deal. NBD. Right. I think work friends. Like, yeah. that's what I think of when I think of yeah, friends for a season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, work friends. Well, I still go all in on that, too. But I've learned my lesson just recently. Yeah, I don't. Like, I don't go all in like like that. I, that's the difference between us. So anyway, we had a long night of stories. Yes, we did. But I'm glad we still spent it together, even though we didn't get to see Jordan Knight. I know. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, we'll get to see him soon. We will. On the cruise. October will come soon. I can't wait for summer. I know. So excited for summertime. Yeah. I need summer. I need I'm excited. the beach. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. It's February 2nd. It is February 2nd. And Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadow. He always sees his shadow, for God's sakes. He bit the guy last time. He did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, Phil. I, or maybe not this past year, but the year before. It's either this past year or the year before that he bit the guy. He bit the guy? Yeah. Don't stick your face in there. That's Phil for Don't you. be like, hey. He's going to be like, get out of my face. Get out of my face. Funk that. that. <laughs> so. So. That was cool. That was great. So we're going to close up. Yeah. Because uh, Brooke needs to get home. Yeah. It's really late. Um, So we've got a few forms that I've created that our moderators are, you know, taking care of that for us. Looking at. Yep. Um, so we've got the forms are going to be on our website in the NKOTB section. Actually, I think we should create a new section. That's fine. I just don't know what it is yet. Okay, webmaster. So just go on our website. You'll see. You'll see it. We'll figure it out. Yep. So first is going to be five questions that we want to ask our guests every time that they're coming on. And we need those. We've gotten some and they've been very good. Yeah. Very excited. So we will share those with you probably next episode. Some of the ones that we have gotten yep. received. Um, then we have um, the suggestion for Joe questions and topics. If we do end up getting them on the show, getting them on the podcast. How about some suggestions on how we can get them on the podcast? Please? Hey, I like, th- ding, I like ding, the way ding, you ding, think. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Be- how's that going to happen? Yeah, Dunno. Dunno. No, no. But we, I just like, I kind of have an idea of how I want it to w- go. I just don't know if that's a possibility. So I guess we got to find that out. Yep. If it ever happens. True. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. But I want to be prepared if it does happen. Third, we have show ideas that we always want. Like we always want new ideas. Yeah. So if you've For got like new kids in the block <clears throat> or eighties, nineties, exactly. Um, Courtney sent in a really good one. She was about like Fisher Price toys. Yep, that's great. I think we should do that. Like little people. Like all like all the ones that we had like from the eighties that we had, like absolutely loved. Like the record player at that. You know they re- well. We'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it on a future episode. Right. And then um, friendship stories. We're still looking for those new kids on the block friendship stories. And we're still looking for your cruise stories. Or 80s and 90s friendship stories, too. Yes. Hey. Any hey. 80s or 90s stories. We right. need your 80s or 90s stories. Just send them. You just tell us a story about going to the park, playing flashlight tag, your first kiss. Tell yep. us about your first kiss. Did you play spin the bottle? We are going to be doing something with the Facebook group, too. Um, We bought a box full of New Kids on the Block stuff. And when we hit 1,000 members in our Facebook group, we are going to do a giveaway of a bunch of cool stuff. You guys are going to be so excited. So that's it. That's all we have. Do-do-do. Charge! Please read us. And review us. Yes, rate and review on iTunes, Apple Podcasts because, would be great. Yep, reviews, I mean, ratings help us. The iTunes algorithm, whatever it is, helps us get seen. They so like that. We don't need it for our own, like, confidence. No. We appreciate it. But, like, we just need it 
it, it like helps us get seen. So we appreciate it. Right. So, uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. Well, bye. Wait. <laughs> we got to do our new one. Yes, this is our new one. I like your Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. Wait, we have to do it together. You say you go, you do yours and I do mine. But it's better when we do the that together and then you do yours. Okay. Because mm-hmm. that's what we did the first time and I think that was better. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. One, two, three. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye. bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> that's it.